Masterful storytelling moves people to action. Your stories have the power to influence people and make change happen. The power comes from being audience-centered and knowing which story your audience needs to hear. In 1994, I had the distinct opportunity to build some of the very first commercial websites for AT&T, MasterCard, CBS, and Coors Brewing Company while working for digital marketing agency, Moda Media. And because of that experience, I was invited to speak to several hundred people. As a pioneer in the digital marketing industry, it was my honor to step up and support as many people as I could. So I spent months building a very good PowerPoint presentation chock full of all the information I could think of to support this audience. And moments before I went on stage, I got a chance to look at the audience. And I saw there were people in their late 30s, 40s, 50s, even 60s. And it dawned on me that as a 22-year-old, there were people in this audience that were in their careers longer than I'd been alive. And just as it's starting to get into my head, I'm called up on stage. And now, I'm looking at this audience looking back at me, and the fear's starting to rise. But no bother, because I spent months building my presentation, right? So I pulled out the, the clicker and went to advance the first slide, and pop, the screen went dark. The light bulb had burst in the projector. There would be no slides today. If I was feeling fearful before, the full terror was rising up inside of me. And in my head, I was giving myself all the reasons why I didn't deserve to be on this stage. I was too young. I didn't know enough. What, and, and it just kept coming. Time had this cruel joke. It sort of slowed things down so I could really fear, feel the fear, uncertainty, and doubt that was creeping up inside of me. And my thought was, how fast would it take for me to run down this stage and out the back door? But I didn't run. Instead, I did something I'd never done before. Closed my eyes and took a nice deep breath in. And I realized the truth. The truth was, there was nothing, absolutely nothing, that I could tell this audience to help them in their careers when they'd been in their careers longer than I'd been alive. But that's not what I was on stage to do. I was here to help tell them about websites and how to build websites. And so I got out of my head and really focused on the needs of my audience. And with that, I opened my eyes and I began with an apology. Guys, I'm really sorry. I don't know what just happened to that presentation, but it doesn't look like I'm going to be able to share my slides with you today. And I'm really sorry about that because I spent months building the presentation. So after my presentation, if you come up and give me your business card, I promise to send this to each and every one of you. But since we're all gathered here today, let's talk about building websites. And that's how I began. The moment I stopped worrying about myself and what, how I was looking in front of this audience, I was able to connect to the needs of my audience. It was the first time that I was truly audience-centered. Afterwards, a few people came up to me and said, man, I don't know how you did that. I would have been lost without my slides. A few years later, I was at a different conference, and I was at the luncheon keynote. My plate of food had just been served, and as I'm cutting into my chicken, they announce Tim Sanders, chief solution officer of Yahoo, and he runs up on stage. I go to take my first bite of chicken, and as he begins speaking, I'm mesmerized. I'm hanging on his every word. That bite of chicken stayed in front of my mouth for 30 minutes because I didn't want to breathe. I didn't want to move. I didn't want to disconnect from the speaker. And so afterwards, I ran up to him and I said, Tim, that was an incredible presentation. But how did you learn to talk like that? And he wrote down the name Nick Morgan and his book, Working the Room. And he said, if you want to know how to hold the attention of a large audience, read this book, Working the Room, and then hire Nick Morgan, Nick Morgan as your speech coach. And I did exactly that. And what rocked my world was how effectively and efficiently Nick broke down these five story archetypes. Love story, revenge, rags to riches, stranger in a strange land, and holy grail. Once I got to understand these story archetypes, I saw them everywhere. Every story I'd ever read, every movie I ever watched, right? every book I'd ever read, they were all in there. And I could see these story archetypes coming to life for me. 
And you know how someone like plants an idea in your head and then weeks later you're still thinking about it? That's what was going on for me. I would go to a movie and I would say, that was a great revenge story with the side helping of rags to riches. Or an amazing love story set in a stranger in a strange land context. I was using these, these stories to really help me understand. It was like that movie, The Matrix. Instead of seeing the world, I saw the code underneath it all. I could see these stories and how powerful they were. And so in my business, when I'd be asked to pitch a client, I would find out what was going on for that client. If they just lost market share, I would use the, the revenge archetype to help them get back what they'd lost. Or if I was consulting with startups, I would connect them back to their rags to riches story, the reason that they went into business for the first place. Sometimes I would be asked to talk about artificial intelligence, blockchain, or cryptocurrency. And I would use the stranger in a strange land archetype to help peel back the confusing technology and help everyone understand that underneath all that were foundations that they already truly understood. The key is this, understanding what story your audience needs to hear. As my speech coach, Nick Morgan, would tell me, effective communication is not what I say. It's what you, as my audience, hear. So my job as storyteller is to understand what's the story that you need to hear and then serve that up in a powerful way. So let me ask you, what story archetype am I using right now? It's not love story. It's not revenge. And since I haven't been up here going, oh, look at me, I'm such an amazing public speaker, right? It's not rags to riches. So it's one of two. It's either stranger in a strange land or holy grail. And if all I wanted to do was share these five story archetypes with you, we could end it right here and call it a stranger in a strange land story. But that's not how I want to end. No, I want you to see the power of storytelling and how masterful storytellers change the world one story at a time. The Holy Grail archetype is about connecting to something that's so much greater than yourself. Inside of each of you is a story that when received will really support the people that you love. Because wrapped up in that story is a key message that when it's received has the power to influence people and make change happen. All that is needed is to be audience-centered. So what do I mean by audience-centered? Think about it. We live so much of our life in social media today. How often are we posting on Facebook or Instagram or Twitter or LinkedIn or any myriad of other social media platforms? We are who Google says we are. And so if I want to get to know my audience ahead of time, that's one option. I can go out and see what they're posting about themselves. And yet, we're not really telling the whole story there on social media, are we? So I have another powerful tool. I get to ask open-ended questions. When I ask a how, what, or why question, I allow my audience to let me know a little something about themselves. I get to check in and hear what's the story they need to hear. You see, you've already told me a lot about yourself. Just for being here, right here today, you've made big effort. You've taken steps forward. And I want to tell you that time is our most precious commodity. I value your time. I appreciate you being here. So I'm going to ask you to take one more step forward. I want you to be right here on this stage giving your TED Talk. Because the brilliance of TED is that in 18 minutes, you have the opportunity to make a seismic impact. And at least that's why I'm here. I know that each and every one of you have a powerful story that can enrich us all. And I implore you to be audience-centered and deliver that story powerfully. All you need to determine is what's the story your audience needs to hear. Is it a love story, revenge, rags to riches, stranger in a strange land, or holy grail? In 2015, it looked like I had it all. My company, TreyPoint, was on the Inc. 5000 list two years in a row. I had a blissful 15-year marriage, two amazing kids, and I was on the path to total financial freedom. And yet, I distinctly remember being on the beach in St. Lucia, 
looking out into the ocean and saying, is this all there is? Instead of being grateful for everything that I had achieved, I was feeling that something was missing. Everything that I ever wanted as a 12-year-old, I had accomplished, and yet there was a hole inside. My business coach, Chad Cooper, he asked me a very powerful question. He said, if your life was a movie, would anyone pay to see it? I had the sinking feeling that the answer was a hard no. I was an extra in so many other people's epic movies. And I was not the lead actor in my own movie. So I did what anyone would do who's seeking transformation. I went to a Tony Robbins Unleash the Power Within event. Right? And it was there that I realized what had happened. I was 65 pounds overweight. I had traded my health for my deep desire for wealth. And I could see that if I didn't change anything, I was on track for an early heart attack. And so we did a guided meditation exercise. And I was able to take my life out five years from today. And I said, if I change nothing, here's what happens. Not only do I have a heart attack and die, but I could visually see my wife and children crying over my gravesite. The very people I was working so hard to support. And the funny thing is, this never happened. It was just a story that I could see as a likely outcome. And with that, I made an instant change. I stood up and I declared, I will complete a 140.6 mile Ironman. If you don't know what that is, it's a 2.4 mile swim, followed by a 112 mile bike, and then a full 26.2 mile marathon. And if you knew me back then, that was laughable because I'd never even done a marathon. And yet I was committed. With the help of Siri Lindley, one of the top triathlete coaches, not only did I finish that triathlon, but I finished in the top 50% in under 13 hours. And that's not all I did. I wound down my marketing agency, and I made sweeping changes to make sure that I created a new standard for myself, one that not only would be satisfying and make me happy, but one that I live by to this day. And so you see, you stand here before you being totally transformed by a single story, the story of my life, and I changed that next chapter. See, that's why I'm here, because I got a chance to work on the most important audience member that I have the power to influence, me. And so when you choose to tell your stories, you are connecting to the deepest part of our humanity. And you're helping those people around you take bold action and make a difference. Your stories have more power than you think. And they're there to help your friends, your family members, your work colleagues, and your larger community. And when you choose to share, share your stories, you're allowing people to learn, grow, and be the best versions of themselves. And you get to start with the most important audience member that you have the power to influence, you. It has been an honor and a privilege to be here with you today. Thank you for listening to my stories. <laughs>